Welcome, everyone, to People on Dating. I'm your host, Will Moranza. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, this podcast is about the ups and downs of dating and how to navigate through it. Today, my guest is Tamara Blug. Did I get your last name right? Perfect. It's like you <laughs> sneeze. You did it good. Oh, okay. Uh, she, she is your confidence coach. She has over 500,000 downloads episodes on, on her podcast. Plus, she's helped over 1,500 people uh, in, in the coaching field and has three coaching certifications. Tamara, thank you so much for being on People on Dating. How are you? Thank you so much, William. I hope I said your name right. <laughs> nice to no, meet you. you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> no, no, it's my pleasure. So Tamara, tell us a little bit about yourself. How, what was your journey like to get here to become a coach? You have your own podcast. Uh, you know, you're, uh, you, I guess you could say you're a confidence coach to help the next, you know, people meet their, uh, their significant other. So what was that journey like for you? Yes, thank you for asking. So, you know, I used to be a teacher um, in Switzerland and I used to okay. love working with kids, but I felt like a bit and I have so much respect for all the teachers out there, you know, but I just feel like sometimes it's like the personal development, you know, how, how to build a relationship, how to meet somebody like to build a relationship and to connect deeper and how not to take things personally. Like, I wonder how we could learn this at school. So I started reading books, you know, these uh, self-help books that uh, usually can be summarized into a blog post. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. But so I started to, <laughs> I'm kidding. I respect for everybody that uh, put their work out there. And I started uh, learning life coaching and I started coaching people, you know, on time management. Actually, I used to uh, coach a lot on dating also at a certain okay. point and also on weight loss a bit. And I realized that deep down, always comes down to you know the way we look at ourselves like what we give like ourselves permission to believe about ourselves because we reach this goal weight uh, this weight loss like the goal <laughs> to lose the weight or because we manage yeah. our time or because we got this job so I realized deep down it very often comes down to confidence so I said yeah confidence is something I used to struggle with said for sure I can help so many people and um, then I added the fun tagline you know as a fun coach also because I think we do take our life and uh, ourselves very seriously so yeah this is how I came here in a nutshell <laughs> no no definitely it makes sense to me you know and it's funny because like today's topic it's about becoming an awesome person to date and I see you know in uh, um, today's modern dating society uh, you know, I'm an older man. So, you know, back in when I was in my 20s and 30s, you know, we caught the woman, we talked to them and, you know, we bought flowers and all that. It seems like that's almost a thing of the past and to, to you know, when I talk to some of my female friends um, in your coaching and everyday life. <laughs> Is that gone, being a gentleman, is that a thing of the past or is it because women have set uh, standards too high, uh, excuse me, that men can't meet them? Or, and, and, and vice versa too, because I know men have standards that, you know, it's way, way, way too high. So, so what do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's a good question. And, uh, you know, each time that I coach people on dating, very often mm -hmm. they come with the list of uh, everything that this person should have, what you said, the standards. And yeah. I always like also to ask if in the first place, the people that is like have this checklist, this checklist do they are um, yeah. behaving like this? Do they are embodying, you know, wanting somebody that is fun, but also a bit serious, but intelligent, but still have sense of humor. And I also, I, I agree. It's interesting to know what you want. I think it's a, it's a good direction, but I'm wondering to, to answer a question. My first step is always to bring back, you know, to the person that is going on date and want to find somebody and to look yeah. at what their standards are. But if they show up like this, you know, as the fun person, as the smart person, does that make sense? I hope it yeah, answers no, the no. question. <laughs> no, 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 I, 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 no, no, you did, you did. So, um, so tomorrow, so, so for you, when you meet a client or, you know, you're talking to someone, whether it's a friend or again, a future client, um, do you put them through a criteria? In other words, if they want to meet someone, uh, that's fun loving and loves to laugh and, uh, is always silly. Do you try to match them up with people like that? Or you try to do opposite attraction um like how how does how do you um navigate that especially if a man is looking for some sort of woman and a woman is looking for some uh sort of man or or a partner i should say actually i believe that the way to go here is to date many people because as much as it goes you know some people come also to me i'm a taurus but she's a capricorn so it's not going to work out but i do believe that actually and i respect everybody again i have lots of understanding for all of this because why not but i do believe if you go on many dates and you make you meet many people first you can have a very fun 
anthropological experience, if you decide to look at it this way, but then you can actually play with it and see if it's going to work maybe more with this person or maybe, as you said, sometimes it can attract us. I think that for this, I'm more helping, you know, the person that is going on the date with their mindset, like how they're showing up because we we act in the world according to what we're thinking. So we yeah. often think that we are doing our best, but I think that there is always something else to do. Otherwise, we we give all of our power to the world, you know, and then there's nothing that we can do about it. So I like to re-empower us by... Okay, this is like what you think is the prime when it comes to go out and meet people. And actually, let's see how maybe this is not the prime, how we can look at it differently. And then you will show up differently. You know, people, just to give you an example, people say dating is very hard, for example. So right. just imagine somebody that goes down the street, that goes on dates, think that dating is very hard. As much as you don't say the words on dates, like it is showing it's a smell, you know? So we just question if it's the truth and if we can also have fun on the way because... If you look at this, relationship are hard. Single is hard, you know, like all of it is hard. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I definitely <laughs> agree. So, yeah, no, con continue because that, that makes a good point because I think if, if your mindset is set that dating is hard, dating is this, and I listen, I talked to a friend of mine, she's a few years younger than me, and she said to Myra, oh, I hate it, dating sucks. You know, you so I, and she said that, and and I and I kind of agree with her because I'm like, yeah, you know, especially when you get older, it, it's it's so different now <laughs> compared to when you're younger. Um, so all right, so Tamara, the, the biggest thing is right. How as a person, let's start off with with a man first. How does how does one become awesome to date? What does the man need to do to take those steps? I know, I know you're thinking tomorrow. I can see your eyes and I can see your <laughs> mind going. So go ahead. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Um, I think actually everybody has their own definition for being awesome. So okay. I think what is, again, it's going back to what is in our control because we, and this is really the coaching that I'm like doing and I love it. It's, we try, we tend a bit to try to change a bit the people around. So we can think something about them like, yeah, oh, they opened me the door. So it means this. But I think that actually to go back to what is really in our control, which is, again, our mindset, which some people will say, I don't care about this. But it goes a bit down again to what we're thinking because it's based, um, it's backed up by cognitive behavioral therapy that says that our thoughts create our reality. So again, we don't always have to change the things we're doing, but more who we are being, like, you know, what we're thinking. So to answer your question, I would say to everybody like it's um people are sometimes a bit stuck in an identity you know like this is how i've been going on dates until now uh, sometimes like i don't know i go home at night i don't want to go back to somebody's place like sometimes we define ourselves by what we've been doing in our like uh, dating journey so i think what is interesting here is if you could start from scratch and again what you said like how can we be an awesome person to go on date just ask for everybody what would like if i could show up in any way that i want and i want to be an awesome person and outside of what I've been doing until today if it's like you wake up with amnesia which I, I don't wish for anybody listening but there is something about you know we are very attached to how things happen in the past and what we make it mean about us like people always live during the date it means something about me but again we bring back the power into like who we are and who how do we decide to show up and your definition I'm curious to ask you maybe William what do you think is an awesome person to to meet on a date I think you know inside of instead of wanting the other one to be awesome I'm bringing it back to how I'm showing up what is in my control you know tell me yeah, yeah you know and it's funny that you say that I am um, I remember a few years ago I was um I I was critical of myself in some in terms of dating because there were I was I guess I was so nice that I let the boundaries get crossed. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if somebody, a woman said something, I might not say anything back, or she might do something, I might not do anything back. So I found myself do, doing that so much that I had to sit down one day tomorrow mm -hmm. and just think about it. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Okay, first of all, I'm not setting any boundaries. I'm not setting any criteria. I'm, I'm basically letting whoever she is just I hate to say walk over me and a new term and and this day and age is called simp simping which mm. basically means that um that you putting out all effort to a woman and it's not coming back to you the same you know so she's taking taking and not giving back so that's what some of the definition of simping means it's it's more of a 
a millennial term now, a young, you know, young people term, but, you know, I definitely get it. So for me, uh, tomorrow, what I had to do is I had to focus on myself. Okay, this is what I got to do. I got to be myself. I got to set criteria. I got to set a boundary. And if somebody crosses it, then I have to say something about it. Then I have to show them, hey, you can't do this anymore. Um, and then be myself, where if I like to do a certain thing, I'm going to tell that person, this is what I like to do. If you don't agree, that's fine. That's fine on you, but I'm going to be me. And I, I would find myself changing for that person to make her happy. Mm. But in the same time, I made myself miserable because I was focusing all the attention on her. It should be at least a 50, 50, or at least let me take charge of my life. You take charge of your life. And if we can meet in the middle somehow, I'm fine. So that's so that was part of the things I had to go through is to sit down, read books, look at videos, uh, just do a self-awareness test on myself. This is what I'm doing wrong. And I when I started doing that, changing, I found myself uh, finding more women that like me because I was just forthcoming. I was telling them, just, hey, I like you. I want to take you out. Mm. If not, don't worry about it. No hard feelings. And that's it. I was yeah. I was always shy. I always beat around the bush. Uh, maybe we could go out someday. Maybe we could, uh, you know, if you're not busy. No, I, I just t straight out. Listen, I want to take you out. You, yes or no? Mm. Okay. No hard feelings. And then I just keep it moving. Yeah, that's it's how such a good I had way. to change. It's yeah. like also much more authentic. I mean, if they don't like you, at least they don't like the real you, you know, because sometimes we are appearing, you know, somehow I, I totally understand what you mean. And uh, you're right. I think when if we are not really ourselves, in, <laughs> then people are not pleased. It's not even they saw the real us. So at least the worst that can happen, and I like to say it, even on dating, I think it's like not even, but like it's a it's a topic I love because I think going on dates, on a dated, dating journey, it's a... Like the best personal development journey you can do, you know, because it's reflecting yeah. everything, you know, your insecurities and the fear of rejection. But I think so in dating, even um, the most, uh, the area that is the most, uh, like we can see this the most, is that the worst that can happen always is an emotion. So we are afraid, you know, right. of being rejected of anything. But if we would just take it less seriously and let's make it mean that something has gone wrong. It's just an emotion, but uh, it's not that easy. You know, we need to get familiar like you did being more yeah. aware. And I think to focus what is in our control is just kind of relieving, you know, because if we try to be in somebody else's business, but nobody's on ours, like it's we are everybody, if it's everybody is in their business, it's just a kind of, I agree, the authenticity is uh, is important. Yeah, and that's the thing. I made sure that I was being authentic. And I said, listen, I like doing this on the weekends. I like doing that on during the week. I, you know, I'm focusing on my on my business side hustle or whatever you want to call it. Um, things that I didn't do in the past. And now I do it. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and I just tell them, listen, I'm gonna be busy for the next couple of days. I could talk to you, but in other words, if I we're gonna go out. It has to be this day and this day. Simple as that. I can't lose focus on what I want to accomplish. Even though I'm an older gentleman, I still want to accomplish <laughs> some things. You know that, Tamara? We talked yeah. with Tamara Flood. Uh, today's topic is becoming an awesome person today. So, okay. So for a woman, uh, Tamara, you have a client. She's looking to find someone, uh, a certain type of man. What kind of test do you put them to? Or do you like ask them a bunch of questions? Uh, what they're looking for in a man, what they want in a man, what they hope to find in a man. <laughs> What's t some of the things you put a woman through? Okay, I will try to answer that <laughs> in a nutshell in two minutes. <laughs> no, I think usually what is interesting is there are two directions that um, we can I can take the person through, the woman. And uh, yeah. it goes also with listening to my own intuition. You know, I think we don't, like we look often for the answers outside of us. And I believe that we have many, many answers already on the inside so we can trust ourselves. And worst case, again, we feel an emotion and we try something else. So the two directions here, one is to maybe look at, Often, you know, people that come for coaching, they they tried something and they feel stuck. So we can look at in what specific, in what specific situation they feel stuck. Like in at what moment of the dating process or the dating journey they feel stuck and they feel like it's not going the way they want. Like for example, the one that I get often is the uh, people are ghosting me. You know, like this is what the people come uh, to yes, me. yes, yes, yes. So yeah, and then we look at what is in our control on again what we're thinking about the fact the fact of being ghosted and. As I mentioned before, when you go on many dates, you less feel being ghosted because you have so many WhatsApp conversations. So you're less like attached to one person. Even if you're mm -hmm. intentional of meeting somebody, you're less attached to one outcome, especially. So it just also it makes it more fun, I believe. But this is one direction to look at where we feel stuck. Or depending on the person's intuition, like what they feel like they want 
like the coaching will be the most helpful and useful for them is uh yeah what do they want instead like how do they want if we would take it as a blank slate blank slate like going yeah, on either, like, completely yeah. <laughs> from start from scratch like how what would be a good date for you like how like yeah from one day then what is like your rules do you need to meet one time after or maybe like just to look at what would be the dream dating journey and this we build up like with questions that are for example in six months from now one hundred percent you are in a relationship you're having fun how different do you show up today going on dates so we don't we don't this is the direction that we don't focus on the stock really the thing that is painful which sometimes it's good to make a peace with the past but we focus really on okay this is what i want and the energy is completely different when you know that you're going to be in love in six months today you sh you're like me really and you get excited and the energy is completely different when you go on dates ah okay yeah no i so, get that so you put you prefer to have people meet in person or, or do you, um in other words do you like people uh to be on dating apps i'm not a fan of dating apps i like to meet someone in person that's just me um i like to meet them at social events or if i'm in a, a lounge or if i get introduced by a friend or whatever I prefer to meet the person in, in in the moment. I don't. I'm not a fan of dating apps. I just mm -hmm. like you said because of ghosting and things like that. Do you do, are you okay with your clients meeting on on dating apps and then a few texts and then they go out and meet in person? Is that how you prefer to have your clients um, at least socialize at the beginning through apps? Yeah, you know, I will tell you. I think that. It, like as a, I, I said, we I coach more on you know what we're thinking, not really what what they're doing. So I'm not gonna like tell them what to do because I know that advice. When people give me advice, it's like not working until I find it. It's a good advice, you know. So sure. I don't, but I do understand what you're saying because I kind of maybe romantic, and I wish I would have met my current partner. We are celebrating ten years, and we did meet. Oh, on congratulations! An app. <laughs> Thank you. But we did meet on an app, and I have to say that I usually used to lie about it because I think exactly what you think. So to answer your question, I think there's no right way to do uh, but i have to say two points because we we are in this conversation you and me if you say like i really don't like apps of course this is the experience you're gonna have you know because you believe this thought to be true which there's nothing wrong with it but i would more um today i would look for every possibility but it needs to be fun so then i always like you know when we go again in the coaching i love to ask the person but how can we make this fun like how because people think that they're gonna feel relieved and feel better when they're gonna be in love when they're going to reach, you know, like be with this person. But I believe that we can have it all and feel good while we're looking for love, while we like really. So to answer your question, I think that going on um, apps could, there are good things about it and there are bad things about meeting in uh, in real life. And by the way, to like tease you a bit, we could also meet in real life, like people and still be ghosted, you know, so you can find, no, you know. Uh, no, no, exactly. <laughs> no, no, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm teasing I mean, you. No, no, but it's true though, because you can meet in person and then, you know, you, you hope for a second date and then all of a sudden that person does ghost you because you, they're not returning your phone call. Yeah, and you went out of your home. You needed to wear clothes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, exactly. Okay, so, you know, going forward, right? So when, when you, when you, um, uh, you, you're coaching your people, the people that you work with, uh, if they've been through bad relationships, Right. So they think all mm. men, all women are bad. How do you get them out of their mindset? You know, that mindset and get them into a positive mm. mindset. Because like I said, I told you a friend of mine, she said dating sucks. So her mindset is that probably for her, all men are, eh, you know, trash. <laughs> so Yeah, I get how, it. So how do you get a, a, someone out of that mindset to say, hey, not all people are the same? I understand. And first, I have to say, William, when you say, I have a friend that we all know that you're talking about you. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? People say this well, all the but time. But you know what? I, I do me. I, I do definitely admit that dating sucks. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, sugarcoating that. But I do mm -hmm. have a friend, though, uh, that she said, <laughs> she said the same nice thing. Nice try. And we both agreed. <laughs> no, I know, but look, her. also, I'm look, being is, truthful. <laughs> no, for sure, for sure. And I'm here just also to tease because then, you know, we will go on our way, but I want to have yeah. you know, to risk the relationship. So then you can be like, well, of maybe course, this makes sense. I'm kidding and not risking. <laughs> but I have to say that when we meet together and people, you know, I hear this complete other topic, but for somebody it can resonate because it's not like where they are, like in the problem in. But, you know, money, for example, people say all the time, it's so hard to make money. So I'm just saying, 
or like time people say there's never enough time so i'm just you know when people sit together and they build this belief and bring more pira um more stones to the pyramid of course that this is what we create in our life you know like having enough yeah. time so i just want to say this that it totally makes sense and so my first approach to tell you is always to my clients say it's to have compassion and empathy towards like you think this like about someone or about men because of your experience yeah it honestly makes sense and it's a cognitive bias that uh you know the brain cannot reinvent the wheel every day so it's just finding proof and evidence for what it's thinking so yeah. one of the cognitive biases is um the i think it's called confirmation bias that for everything you think it is going actively to look for proof and evidence so again if you have if we have experience in the past with somebody who already hurt us the brain just wants to make sure like your brain's job isn't to make you happy is to keep you alive so it will give you yeah. more proof and evidence to fit this up because for like your brain you're just alive so it's a good job so to answer your question <laughs> the first way uh, i think we bring compassion and um, understanding around like first uncovering what we're thinking about you right. know the old like the person that hurt us and just looking at thoughts because we have 60,000 thoughts per day and we believe that they are the truth but they are just thoughts you know this is why for yeah. one event the same for example the relationship that maybe this person broke um the, your heart just to give an example they don't have sure. the same emotions and thoughts about it because they experience it a different way so compassion and kindness towards what we are feeling and then you said to bring to a positive mindset I think in the middle what we want is find more neutral space kind of a forgiveness, like forgiving ourselves for buying into the misbelief that men are all the same. And again, yeah. when we think men are on a much emotionally unavailable, it's one that I hear very often. Yeah, I hear that too, yeah. <laughs> so it is like, and when I hear this, you know, I'm not like straight going inside, like having an agenda. And I do understand the suffering that the person like feel from believing this thought to be true. It's just the moment we just poke around, like just we look at the belief and you know, in belief, I like that there is the word lie, L-I-E. Yeah. So some belief, it, it can be a lie, just like I'm in the business of belief. So I like to help people, of course, having belief that help them meet people and feel good. But so to answer a question, it's more to find a neutral space to be before being very positive. Otherwise, we, we won't believe it. And as you said, we won't be authentic, you know, because we'll be like, I'm having fun and you're not, you know. So it's yeah. more maybe to make past, uh, peace with the past. And this is something also we do is can we rewrite the past as a, I believe after a bit of work, we need to talk, but it's, there is a gift and an opportunity in everything that happened for us. And this is where my confidence coaching resides. It's really to help people feel so good on the inside, like having this um, peace, you know, on the inside that sure. things can happen in life, but it's not moving this worthiness. You know, we always, often we want to be loved so we can tell ourselves that we are worthy of love, you know? So I want a bit of both, but yeah, just to answer your question, I think just to be more neutral and feel at peace with what happened. And always, always, this, if it's the world for today, it's not to define ourselves, but what happened to us by the relationship we had, by the breakups. It doesn't say anything. We are much more than what happened to us, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely get that. No, no, definitely. No, I get it. I, I, I like what you said, though, about, you know, it's our belief system. You know, yes, I agree. Everybody's worthy of love. Uh, you know, we, like you said before, the confirmation bias where, you know, you say, oh, you know, all people are the same, uh, you know, you just, you know, because you just don't want to get hurt again. Yeah, all of us get hurt, of but you got to get back out. You got to get out there again. Anyway, first of all, tomorrow, I want to thank you so much for being on People on Dating. I could probably talk to you another hour. Um, before I let you go, talk more about your podcast. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, yeah, it's, uh, I have, no, I'm just thinking about what conversation and I find it, I wish we would learn this at school, you know, it will save us so much time. We don't know what we don't know. So when we talk now, I'm like, I wish I could tell kids about it, you know, but yeah. uh, just for everybody listening that it's okay that we don't know, like not to beat ourselves up and use it against ourselves. Uh, my podcast is a, is a funny example because I changed so much direction while doing it, but it is about confidence also, get confident, get happy podcast. And uh, yeah, it's just a, uh, Funny podcast with very, like, as you said, being authentic and having fun and not taking uh, ourselves and our life too seriously. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. And <laughs> talk you. more about your coaching. Yes. So my coaching is exactly the example of uh, like what uh, I showed you today. It's we are breaking all the rules. We are looking at what is possible and looking at all the beliefs that today we are where we are because 
we have to be somewhere. And if we want something else in our life, we just have to look. It's kind of simple. It's very, very simple. It's looking at what we're thinking. But it's like yeah. a little surgeon, and I did compare myself to a doctor, but we cannot operate <laughs> having surgery on our own brain. So it is the mirror that you need. It's the guidance and the support that uh, everybody can use to yeah, to look at what you're thinking. So it is simple, but I don't find it easy. So this is why I, I, I feel honored to be able to help people. So that's why no, I'm No. Today. Well, listen, I, I, I think you're going to become a... I, I, you might be the next Oprah of... Wow. Of Australia, France, United States, you might be worldwide. So I could I could see that for you. Oh, um thank you. Tamara, thank anything you. else you wanna talk about? Anything else you wanna promote? I just want to say, you know, you say this and just because I feel uh, really connected to you, I am uh, learning, I'm learning actually American Sign Language. So my aim is okay. to be an expert in confidence to help people, everybody that wants to feel more confident. But when you say that, I was like, maybe he's right, you know, because I have my own doubts that you don't see. Because you're outside. So thank you yeah. so much. Not just being here, continuing listening to your podcast. I want to recommend your listeners and no, just to, uh, to be around. <laughs> thank well, you. Well, thank you. No, no, definitely. And if somebody wants to get in contact with you, what's the best way? Yes, it's to come to my website. So it's personal development zone.com. I want to show everybody that uh, you don't <coughs> have to be ready to start anything. This is how I started my blog back then. So just start where you are and it doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful. So this is my website. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely put it on this show notes. Well, first of oh, all, again, you. Tamara, thank you so much for being on People on Dating. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much, William. It was a blast. Me too. Definitely. All right. Bye-bye.